Hi guys, welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I am going to talk about the cocktail bird, which has the origin from Australia. And it belongs to the cockatoo family. And it is also the smallest of the cockatoo species. It is also known as the slender long crested Australian parrot. In the wild, you will find the cocktails not to be in this color. And that's because their base color is gray color. They'll be either in a dark gray or some form of ash color. That is their base color in the wild. colony in the wild where it will be consisting of about 20 to 40 birds at the maximum. Talking about the body length, for a male bird it will be anywhere between 29 to 33 centimeters in the body length from the head to tail and for a female it will be anywhere between 27 to 31 centimeters of the maximum. And about the body weight, it will be anywhere between 70 to 120 grams at the maximum. In the wild, the color of the cocktail is only in gray color or some shades of ash. But due to the demand in the pet world, they started to do some color mutations and then they came up with various colors. Namely, the Lutino, Pied, Pearl, Cinnamon, Fawn, Saddleback and Butterfly, Primrose, Primrose is nothing but any bird which has more of the yellow shade in their body where termed as the primrose and they were also known as lemon yellow and the latest mutations are the cremino and the emerald. the sex of the bird it is not really easy like how you make out in the bajrigas wherein you see the blue nose and then you make it as the male and then if you see a white nose and it will be a female but whereas in the cocktail it's really not so it is always suggested to go in for a DNA sexing otherwise you can do something called the colony breeding wherein you can put a small flock of birds like for example 10 to 15 birds in a free flight cage wherein they can have their natural bonding a natural pairing and then from there you take those bonded pairs and then release them into the breeding cage for successful breeding and thus we can make sure about the male and the females in this variety of bird well if you ask me about the breeding i would say it's very easy to breed a cocktail you just gotta have a perfectly bonded pair a good male and female and then a uh, cage setup like this will do so where this is around 200 feet in length and the height is about 2 feet and then the width is around uh, 2 feet as well and most importantly the uh, nest box that is always 12 into 12 inches and that's the perfect nest box for a cocktail breeding. And for the nest box bedding, kindly don't put any kind of soil or sand in it because it will lead to the bacterial breeding culture so kindly avoid that and you can use the wood shavings or husk and if you ask me is cocktail a good bird for being a hand tamed pet 
Yes, I would definitely tell cocktail is really a good bird for hand taming purpose because of their very gentle and affectionate nature. expressive and they love to interact with humans and one more thing about the cocktail is that they use these crests for the purpose wherein they can communicate the signals of their inner feelings for example if their crest is pointed upwards to the roof it means that they are frightened or scared but if the crest is like just lowering towards their neck or the head it means that they are relaxed and they feel secure about their ambience and if you compare a cockatoo and you would have seen a lot of cockatoos talking very well and if you ask me would a cocktail talk just like a cockatoo i would say no because they are not really the good talkers only the male cocktails can mimic a bit and whistle a lot and then talk in one or two words and that's the maximum Miku 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 Whereas the female bird just can't even mimic nor talk like a male bird. And talking about the foot pattern for a cocktail bird, you can use the millet, like the foxtail millet, and the sprouted seeds, and fruits like apple, kiwi, strawberry, and also the vegetables like the carrot, beetroot, and broccoli. But never ever give the avocado fruit, as I have always told in my earlier videos. And also make it a point that you never feed any variety of mushroom to your birds because even they can be toxic to your birds. And when you have a hunting bird, they might be trying to ask for your food when you're eating them, but never feed them any form of human foods like the chips or the wafers or the chocolates. You can also feed them with the pellet food, which is available in the pet stores. And so that is all about the food patterns for a cocktail bird. And to know about the egg laying capacity in cocktails, they lay anywhere between 4 to 7 eggs at the maximum and they take uh, an incubation period of 18 to 21 days. Talking about the lifespan of a cocktail bird, in the wild they live anywhere between 12 to 14 years and in the captivity they can live from 15 to 20 years. Few examples of the body gestures of a cocktail are that if you see a cocktail bird hanging upside down on its perch when you enter a room or if you see a cocktail spreading its wings like an aeroplane when you enter a room then it means that your bird is feeling very happy about your entry in the room. And before owning a cocktail do take these two points in your mind. The cocktails do have something called a night fright, especially if they're hand tamed, which simply means that when you have the bird in your room and when you put off the lights in the night, they tend to get scared due to the hyper darkness. And also, if there's any creepy crawls like an ant or a cockroach or a lizard get onto their feet, they might really get very frightened and then it also leads to an extent where they just fall onto the floor of the cage and also they get hurt. So that is called as a night fright. And to avoid this, you can do something. It's nothing that you just gotta fix a night lamp in the room where you're having the cocktail bird so that it doesn't feel that 
cold darkness and it can have some kind of light source in the room so that it doesn't get frightened so that we can avoid the night fright. And before owning a hand team cocktail, please know about the important point that these cocktails will have something called the powder coated feathers. These are something like the pet danders which you see on any other form of animals like the dogs or cats or any other birds. But these are not pet danders but this is something different. It's something like a powder particles which will be on the feathers of the cocktail. This is actually because naturally it was created that way that these powder particles protect them from the harsh winds and the wet rains and that is the reason why it was created to have this kind of a powder coated feather and if you are an asthmatic patient or if you have wheezing or any form of respiratory illness kindly do have a secondary thought about having a cocktail as a hunting pill because these powders can really be easily inhaled by you so this can be not suggested for people who are having some kind of respiratory illness but if you're gonna have your cocktail aviary set up outside the house then it is not gonna bother you or affect you in any ways and if you ask me about the price for a cocktail in a country like India then it starts from a basic range from 1800 rupees for a grey color cocktail and 2200 to 2500 for a lutino kind of a cocktail and 8000 rupees for an albino like that it will go up to for example for a saddleback or a butterfly it will cost anywhere between 20 to 35000 rupees and for a very sophisticated mutation like the emerald it will cost you anywhere between 50000 to 75000 rupees Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my video today and also I hope that it was really informative to you and I'm also planning to do more informative video on pet varieties. So kindly subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed my channel as yet and also share this video with your friends if you find it useful and thank you so much for watching my video all this while. Thank you.